And welcome back to the Welcome Arms. We have a couple of visitors with us, and I am going to just introduce them and then let them take it away. So we have here John Samuel, and he is the director of the shipping registry, VI shipping registry, that is. And we have Graham Gibbs, who is the chairman of the Charter Yacht Society. And they are going to be discussing some of the legislation and some of the um, modernization of the shipping registry here in the BVI. Take it away. Thank you very much, Janet. And uh, John, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day uh, sure, to be Graham. here with us. Um, I'm pleased to be here to have this discussion with um, one of the most important industries in, in the British Virgin Islands. Oh, thank you. Um, so, so as you know, the BBI has absolutely unparalleled natural resources, um, line of sight navigation, incredible pristine waters, some of the best snorkeling spots in the Caribbean, ease of access to the market, uh, the tourist market, this makes us the sailing capital of the world. Um, tens of thousands of tourists come to the BVI every year. COVID perhaps a little bit of an exception, um, but we're looking ahead. Um, uh, and, and with this industry, the, the government has an eye to grow the marine tourism industry. Um, there's been a little bit of discussion around um, the modernization of Virgin Island Shipping Registry. Can you tell us a little bit what's envisioned by the modernization? Um, the Virgin Islands Shipping Registry, which is essentially uh, the maritime administration of the, the British Virgin Islands, meaning that we're responsible for all matters of maritime safety in and around the BVI and maritime administration on BVI flag vessels. Um, as well, we are the flag of the British Virgin Islands. We administrate the BVI flag, so if you're registered with the Virgin Islands, um, our office is the office that you, deals with, that you deal with. Um, we have, over the, the past year and a half or so, during the COVID time, um, we've been working away at improving our processes um, to make sure that we can offer cutting-edge technology to our clients um, so that all transactions with shipping registry can be seamless, transparent, uh, much easier to, to deal with, uh, we're pushing more online with some of Excellent. our processes. Um, we now can issue electronic certificates uh, using QR codes, um, crew certificates. We have, we're in the final stages of developing our online portal where customers will be able to log into a portal, um, conduct transactions, electronic payments, etc. cetera. So we, we're moving that, that whole interface forward something that's um, more in line with, with current technology and, and, and utilizing um, technology to, to make our customer service interface, or interface with our customers um, much more efficient, um, more friendly, yeah. um, and more, more responsive. More, more focused <coughs> on customer satisfaction as yes. the end result. Yes, and, and for, for any at maritime administration or any flag, it's a bit of a balance because you're, you're the regulator, um, but, but you're still my client, you know, so we have to balance that, um, balance that, that, that service offer. Of course. Um, and that's not the only thing you guys have been working on recently. Um, if, to some people, the word audit is a bad word, but uh, you guys have recently achieved uh, some pretty significant feats, um, one of which is um, the ISO 9001 certification, um, and the other being the Walship 21 designated designation by the U.S. Coast Guard. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about these? And, yes. Um, the, the, as a, most maritime administrations are um, a part of a MOU in their region, which relates to, to port state control issues, vessels trading into and out of foreign ports and, and being subject to inspection by the port state. Um, so the U.S. Coast Guard um, Saddam maintains records on, on foreign flag vessels entering the U.S. ports um, and gives a grade. Uh, so BVI's qualship status essentially says that um, such a high percentage of all vessels entering U.S. ports uh, meet the requisite standards, means we have a low level of deficiency um, that they award us the, the qualship certification. And that speaks to our ability to be able to... Um, administrate and certify vessels uh, at the requisite international standard that allows them to trade into and out of foreign ports without, without difficulty. 
Uh, we also, as a part of our membership with the UK Red Enzyme Group, we're mandated to be uh, have a quality management system in place. Uh, and we recently were certified by uh, GCS in the US as being ISO 9001 certified, which means we now have a quality management system in place. We have procedures, we have standards uh, that we have to meet and maintain. And what that says to our customers is that you can expect a certain level of service, you can expect transparency in the way we deal with you, um, and, and there's accountability within our systems and their methods of recourse and, and response. So uh, you, you, you can be guaranteed that shipping registry will deliver to you um, a service that, that's um, not less than or, or meets any, any international standard. Right. Very, very high quality um, uh, management system. So as that trickle down effect goes to smaller charter yachts, uh, commercial recreational vessels like us, um, that means that the inspections that are being done are being carried out by trained professionals um, and that the boats are meeting or exceeding uh, the requirements, the safety requirements for them on the water. Is that e exactly, correct? because a part of that quality management system speaks to not just your processes, but the, the, um, the qualifi qualifications of your personnel. Um, the, and we even have to conduct internal audit processes to verify that as, a, as an administration we are doing what we say we are doing we're doing it at the standard that we're supposed to be doing it. And, and um, the commercial recreational sector in the BVI is a huge, huge block of our customers. Um, and you know by the amount of boats here that you know, when the season gets busy, we, we have to keep up. And it, it's good for the industry to know that your vessel will be treated exactly the same as, as your neighbor's vessel. Um, standards, requirements uh, will be across the board. And that you can check to see what the standard is you can verify that we're, we're, we're achieving that standard or we're administering that standard to you. And there are, process, there are, there are processes in place for you to um, get back to shipping registry if you're dissatisfied with a product or a service, and then we, uh, we have to respond, respond at a certain level. Yes. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, in March, you gave a press conference with Premier Foy, um, and much of that discussion was about boosting the marine tourism product here in the BVI. Um, and part of that, uh, what policy, new policy framework that's envisioned is to um, encourage more commercial recreational vessels to flag BVI, uh, particularly those that are based here in the BVI. Um, can you tell us more about what's envisioned there? Yes, well, we, um, we are aware that, that the... The, the waters of the British Virgin Islands, this unique product that we have here that's loved um, worldwide, it's the engine of the BVI tourism economy. Um, and as a country, the, the government would like to see the benefits from that engine being spread internally e economically without excessive leakage um, into, into other economies. Uh, so there, there is a move afoot to structure the legislation to encourage vessels to be BVI flag. Um, we, are, we will be having discussions to understand where those challenges are now for, for vessel owners, um, where the challenges are for flagging your vessel to, with BVI, to try and encourage you to flag BVI, and to make sure that um, as a vessel that is flagged BVI and based in BVI, which means that the, the crew of that vessel is more than likely spending more time here, they're spending money here, they're injecting a lot into the economy, that there's some advantages that that vessel has in BVI, whether based on fees, duty exemptions, um, more efficient process, special procedures for clearing in and out, compared to a vessel that's not BVI based. So we want to um, sort of put a structure in place which speaks to or, or represents that the more BVI you are, um, the, the, the better, the, the more benefits you experience while cruising in BVI waters. And this would apply not just to commercial recreational yachts, but even we, at a shipping registry, we have a fair bit of mega yacht clients as well. Um, a lot of those vessels may not be flagged BVI, but spend mm -hmm. a considerable amount of time cruising in BVI during the season. And we want to make sure that there are advantages to them when they come to BVI as a BVI flag. And, and uh, if, if we're able to do that, then um, perhaps we can um, more evenly spread the economic benefits of the industry internal in BVI, and of course, grow my tonnage on the BVI flag. 
Excellent. Thank you. Um, and just to dispel a rumor, is it the intention for BVI government to require all BVI-based boats to be BVI flagged? Uh, the, that is not the intention. And uh, we know that uh, practically for many that that is not possible because there are many um, factors that feed into the decision of where a vessel is flagged. Um, and we, we are considering all of that and how we structure that, how we accommodate vessels that want to be BVI based because the, the structure we are looking at is, looking at is uh, a BVI based, <coughs> a BVI flag vessel that's BVI based, a BVI flag vessel that's foreign based, and a foreign flag vessel that's BVI based or foreign based. So it's sort of four categories. Things. Um, yeah. And before um, before anything happens, we you know we 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 usually call the industry into a meeting and we sit down and we have our little fights about it. And we try to come to, you know, the, 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 the best solution for the industry in the BVI. Um, so clearly there will be um, discussions with the industry and industry will have the opportunity to make representation on, on um, what we're putting forward. Uh, we, we certainly appreciate that. And it all starts with uh, talks and introductions. And we really appreciate you taking the time uh, to talk with us today. Um, on, on those changes, it's been nearly 30 years since... Um, the laws governing the chartering industry uh, and the BVI were last updated. I guess we had a small update with the Cruising Permit Amendment yes. Act in 2017. Um, but what, in your opinion, what are the shortfalls of the legislation as it currently exists? Um, I think that the, the legislation as it, it currently exists um, it, it failed to realize the, the, the relevance and the benefits, the economic benefits of BVI-based boats. Um, and how, that, how those economic benefits are spread in the BVI economy and how that supports the BVI tourism product. And um, in failing to do so, it, it, the, the, the provisions were not put in to make sure that the BVI-based boat that is paying the, the work permit fees and the social security and maybe renting an apartment and, and buying a car and having a bank account, which all drives this BVI economy, that that the realization is there that they are contributing to the BVI economy much more than a foreign-based boat that, that is just trading in and out on a, on a one-week charter. And um, the, the structure was not put in there to make sure that that, that contribution is realized and that, that they, there's some equilibrium brought to the system to make sure that the BVI-based boat is not actually economically disadvantaged because yep. he's paying more, although he's earning the same, the same in the industry. With growth comes demand. What are you going to do within the shipping registry department to be able to meet increased demand? Uh, we, we are currently in the process of um, having our legislation drafted to become a, a statutory uh, board, uh, which means we would be a um, semi-autonomous um, organization in, in the government, similar to some of the other the airports. Tele tele um, telecommunications Regulatory Commission, the Health Services Authority, which allows us um, the freedom and the, the, the ability to manage the business of the shipping registry more efficiently, to be able to meet consumer demand, um, to be able to make internal adjustments uh, so that we, we are delivering the service consistently um, and competitively. Uh, so that, that is a key piece of, of where we're going and how we're going to be able to, to meet our clients. So I expect over the next year um, you will see and feel uh, what would be uh, a, brand new, a brand new shipping registry. We've already relocated to new offices. So those of you who have not been to shipping registry in the last few months, please come by, see us. Um, we, we, we improved our, our reception, or ambience. And, and that speaks to where we're going as an organization. Yeah, I recently went down to the offices, and it is an uh, uh, incredible change from where you guys have been. Um, last couple questions. Um, did shipping registry stop inspecting foreign-based, foreign flag vessels recently? And yes, we did. Um, we made a decision uh, about mid-2020 to suspend inspecting foreign flag, foreign flag foreign-based vessels. Um, and 
anyone who is in the maritime sphere would understand that as the flag administration of the British Virgin Islands, legally, our fence, our limit, sort of stops with BVI waters or BVI flag vessels in international waters. Once you get outside of that, then you, you get into very gray areas about whether or not shipping registry can actually issue certification. So the issue of issuing certification to a foreign flag vessel is a little bit of an anomaly, especially in absence of the flag's permission. BVI law enables us to issue those certificates to BVI-based vessels that are foreign flag that, are, that do not have equivalent certification. So if you're a foreign flag vessel and you're BVI-based, which means you're operating in BVI waters, the law enables us to certify you. If you're a foreign flag and you're not BVI-based, then we get quickly get into a gray mm -hmm. area of whether or not mm -hmm. I'm authorized to actually put that certificate on the boat. Um, and if you run down that line of thinking, you quickly get to questioning liability issues, what happens if there's an accident on that boat, and there's a BVI certificate on a foreign flag vessel, and then the flag says, well, how in the world does it happen? I didn't know you did, that my vessel was operating commercially. So it, it really runs into gray areas very quickly. So until we can clarify that, um, we decided to pull back to where we know we are legally, safely covered. Um, the, second, um, the second factor that fed into that is that you know the size of the, the BVI industry, and that is what we're responsible for at Shipping Registry. Um, you are aware of the size of my team, and I need to be able to take care of my mm -hmm. vessels in BVI um, and have them properly covered before I extend myself um, into other countries to cover vessels in, in those areas. So, so I have to deal with BVI, BVI-based vessels as a priority. So I want to pick up on something you just said. Um, a foreign flag vessel, even if it's coming into the BVI, it, it must be commercially registered. Um, because if, if that boat was operating commercially and you inspected it here in the BVI as a BVI-based vessel, that flag might take exception to say, I didn't know that they were operating commercially. And that's correct. Correct. Okay, I got you. So there's, there's some issues there with, with foreign flag vessels. Um, we're going through that now with, with some foreign flag vessels where recently we've had to say, um, you, you, you want to operate commercially in BVI, but your certificate of registration says you're a recreational vessel. Please go back to your flag and have that corrected. Um, and they did go back to the flag, and the flag did say, yeah, there's an issue here, you need to be commercially registered. So there's some, some issues um, like that. But vessels that, remember in BVI, we, we are a, a UK territory. Um, we are mandated to particular standards. Right now we're dealing with the, the MG and 280, the blue and yellow codes. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the standard that we impose on BVI vessels in, in, in BVI waters. And what we are saying is foreign vessels coming into BVI waters, regardless of where you're flagged, you should be equivalently certified. Um, and your flag can do that. For U.S. vessels, the U.S. Coast Guard has made an accommodation to accept blue and yellow code. Mm -hmm. um, there's, so there's a provision for that in there. As long as you, you, your U.S. flag, you're properly coded, you just do a verification, say yes, you're verified, you know, you can continue to trade. But it's, it's, it's really matters of um, our maritime responsibility for safety in BVI waters, making sure that we cover those, um, those areas and, and precluding ourselves from possible legal recourse, you know, where, you know, because we know that when things go well, everything is good. Um, but as soon as something goes wrong, um, the, the legal fraternity begins to look to see where the holes <laughs> are in any system. Um, and and, and there, there are possibilities where they can say, well, as the maritime administration, as the government, uh, were you negligent in not ensuring that maritime um, standards were withheld? So we must be able to show due diligence that we have done what we needed to do to make sure that um, we upheld. The, the international maritime safety standards. Thanks, John. And just uh, just one more question. I know we're running a little short on time. Um, what services are available from shipping registry that we as 
preferred charter yachts are not taking advantage of? Uh, well, Shipping Registry for provides um, the full breadth of, of maritime administration services, uh, registration, vessel certification, um, certifying of, of boat masters um, and crew for, for operation on vessels. We also have in-house, um, we are mandated to, and we do have in-house, a, a naval architect, um, an engineering surveyor, and a nautical surveyor. So as, as long as you uh, BVI flag primarily, that's what I will say, because BVI flag, you're mine, you're my responsibility. Um, if you need assistance with, with anything on your vessel, um, any issue you're having or you want us to take a look at, um, it could be stability matters, it could be application, application of some engineering issue, um, come in, we will, as long as you're my vessel, you're on my flag, we will try to take care of you. Uh, we will put our guys to work. Um, you will find that the team at Shipping Registry is very, very helpful, very cordial, and I think that we've been able to strike a clear balance, and I push for us to strike a clear balance between being a regulator and, and providing a customer service. Um, so although we, we have to be firm in, with the rules and sometimes we give you exceptions where we can, um, we still tr strive to be helpful and to support, support your operation. Thank you, John. Um, I think we're out of time. Um, I really appreciate you taking time to speak with us today. Uh, we very much look forward to working with your department and other departments within the BVI to further promote the BVI, in particular the crude charter yacht industry. Um, yeah, thank you for taking yeah. time today. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to have uh, discussions with, with anyone in the industry, any groups in the industry. Uh, my staff know I, I, I have pretty much an open door. If you walk in and you say, I need to see the director about something, I say, send them in. And we sit and we have a chat because we know that um, this industry drives the BVI economy and we are here to support the industry and to make sure that that continues to happen in a way that, that um, benefits us all. And um, it was great to be here and I, I look forward to chatting again soon. Thanks, John. Thank you. <laughs>